Well, good morning. Good to see all of you here today. Over the course of the morning, we're baptizing uh, eight people. Uh, four of those will be in this service. And uh, in preparation for the baptisms, I want us to think about the mission of Jesus, which includes a command to baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I want us to think specifically for just a few minutes about one specific aspect of our mission. One place that the mission is described is in Matthew 28. I want to read Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. This is after the resurrection. Jesus appears to his disciples. We read this. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of of the age. 20 years ago, a movie was released that some of you love, and like me, you have seen it an embarrassing number of times. Others of you are probably neutral or negative toward this movie. Maybe you've never heard of it. If that's the case, just bear with me. The name of the movie is The Fellowship of the Ring. Okay, and it's the first movie in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, which is C.S. Uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's epic novel uh, about uh, called the Lord of the Rings, and um, the the plot is basically that there's a ring. I mean, an actual ring. It's a ring of power, and whoever possesses this ring, whoever wears this ring, just becomes obsessed with it. And they have these unnatural supernatural powers, but they become so obsessed with this ring that they become just a shadow of themselves. And so the good guys in Fellowship of the Ring, the good guys have control of this ring, they have possession of it, and they have to decide what to do about it. So they meet together, there's about a dozen or so of them, and Elrond, he speaks and he takes charge and he says, this ring is too powerful for us to use even for good. It will end up dominating us, so we have to destroy it. And the only way to destroy the ring, the ring of power, is to take it deep into the evil kingdom of Mordor. And you have to throw it into the fire in the middle of Mount Doom. And he says, one of you, one of you must do this. And that's when we have this, this iconic statement by Boromir, right? One does not simply walk into Mordor. Its black gates are guarded by more than orcs. There's evil there, it does not sleep. There's the great eye the watch that is ever watchful. The air you breathe, it's a poisonous fume. 10,000 men could not do this. It is folly. And I bring this up because I think that when Jesus' disciples heard the mission that he gave them, they were thinking something very similar. One does not simply go and make disciples of all nations. You just don't do that. Israel has her God, the other nations. They have other gods. They have their gods. And so you don't just walk into Rome. You don't simply walk into Athens and tell them there's a one true living God. You can turn from your gods and worship ours. And this is really unprecedented. In the Old Testament, occasionally, a prophet would go to another country and tell them to turn from their evil or would, would tell them um, to, to, uh, to repent and believe in, in the one true living God. But, but a sustained effort like Jesus told his disciples is really unprecedented. Have you ever stopped to think, how is it that we're here, okay, 2,000 years later, almost 7,000 miles from where Jesus gave this mission, and many of us would say, we're disciples of Jesus Christ, and we're seeking to make disciples among every grouping of people that we come across. How is that even possible? And so that's what I want us to think about today. Jesus actually told us how it's possible, in Matthew 28, 18, that I read earlier. We read this, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me because that's the case, go therefore, and make disciples of all nations. And so it's not the case that Jesus had no authority before his resurrection. All the gospels emphasize that people were amazed at the authority of Jesus when he taught, when he did miracles, when he pronounced forgiveness of sin. Jesus had authority. 
What is different after the resurrection is the scope and the reach of his authority. Now he says, all authority in the heavenly realm and on earth in the realm of sight have been given to me. And so his, his authority, his power has no boundaries. There is nowhere now that Jesus cannot and will not exercise his authority. And so in the heavenly realm where there are both good and evil spiritual beings, the unseen heavenly realm and on the earthly realm where we see and live every day, Jesus has authority. And it's interesting when the apostle Paul looked back at Jesus' authority, he emphasized that when Jesus was raised from the dead and he went back to, the, to, to heaven, he was raised up and enthroned at the right hand of God at the place of all authority. And what does he say? High above every power, ruler, and authority. Those are, those are names for people that, for uh, beings that governed different parts of earth. He's been raised up high above every spiritual being that as long as there have been humans, they have tried to oppress and enslave humanity in their sin. It turns out Jesus has authority over all of them. There is no place that is beyond his reach. There is no human heart that is beyond his reach. And that reality is reflected in Jesus' favorite name for himself. Do you know what Jesus called himself more than any other name that, that he, he referred to himself by? The Son of Man. Over 80 times he calls himself the Son of Man. And I want us to think about that because it has implications for our mission. The Son of Man is, is a phrase that's taken from a vision in Daniel chapter 7 where one who is like a Son of Man came before God and he was given what? Dominion. He was given this authority over all nations. And so this is what we read in Daniel 7, 13 and 14. <clears throat> Daniel says, I saw in the night visions and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man and he came to the ancient of days and was presented before him. So a couple things there. The fact that he was like a son of man means that he was human. The fact that he came on the clouds, that signifies that he was divine. So here you have someone who is both human and divine. We would say fully God and fully man. He came before God. He was presented before him. And notice what happened. See if this sounds familiar in light of our mission. Verse 14, Daniel 7. And to him... This one, like a son of man, was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, one that shall not be destroyed. And so Jesus came as the son of man who has been given all authority and he has this vision of one day people from every tribe, nation, and tongue worshiping him. And what we find in his mission is, is that Jesus doesn't exercise this power unilaterally. He doesn't do it independent of his people. He does it through his people. He does it through people who are already his disciples to make more disciples. He told his, his followers, stay in Jerusalem. You're going to be clothed with power. And then you'll go and make disciples among every grouping of people on earth. And so the only reason that this mission Jesus gave his people, the only reason it's possible is because the Son of Man with all authority, we go in his power, okay? I mean, all us, we're basically a room full of Frodo's, right? But he was a hobbit in case you don't know that. That helps a lot, right? But we have no power. We're, we're nothing in ourselves. We're not great. We're not anything to look at. But in his power, anything is possible. He can reach into any human heart. The mission will be successful. It's not that there won't be any opposition. There will be great opposition at every turn, but it will ultimately be successful. People from every tribe, nation, and tongue will one day worship Jesus, and we have the privilege of being part of that mission. Listen again in verse 19, Matthew 28. One aspect of making disciples is baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Those who are going to be baptized today are basically coming before us. They're not saying, I'm perfect, I've arrived. They're saying, I'm a disciple of Jesus. 
because he died for me. I trust that he, he paid for my sin. He died for me. Therefore, I will live for him by his power. I will live for him. I will seek to be a disciple of Jesus. And so they'll be making a series of affirmations. They'll be uh, declaring their faith in Jesus. They will be renouncing the past and the powers of darkness. Uh, and they will be committing themselves by God's help to live as a disciple of Jesus. And so one aspect of making disciples is baptizing. That's something that is done to you. You don't baptize yourself. You submit to this going under the water. You die with Christ. You've been raised to a new way of life. The other aspect Jesus mentions in verse 20 is teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And so a disciple is not a reluctant learner. A disciple's not somebody who says, hey, what's the bare minimum I have to do to kind of stay in this club? No, a disciple is someone who says, I want more than anything else to know what Jesus teaches. I want to think the way he thinks. I want to feel the things he feels. I want to do the things that he wants me to do. And so we teach people through sermons, through Bible studies, through conversations, through private personal, individual times in the word, through prayer. We seek to saturate, marinate our minds with the word of God. And every single one of us, our hearts and minds are saturated with something. Some voice dominates your mind. It might be your voice. It might be the voice of whoever, your favorite political commentator, your parents, could be any number of people. If you're a disciple, your ambition is to let the voice of Jesus dominate your heart and your mind. And so we teach them to obey everything Jesus has commanded. And then at the verse, end of verse 20, we're told that the one who has all authority is with us to the end of the age. That's a relief. The pressure is off us. I mean, we walk by faith, but we're not trying to persuade people using human logic or human effort. We certainly, certainly don't try to coerce or try to manipulate people. That doesn't work. That's a miserable way to live your life. We simply share this news. Hey, Jesus died for sin. And we tell them what we've experienced. We've experienced freedom. We've experienced life. And it is available to you. If you put your faith in Christ, you will now become a disciple of Jesus. And you'll experience both the challenges and the exhilaration of being a disciple, apprenticed to Jesus himself. God doesn't have any grandchildren. Just because your parents are followers of Christ, that doesn't automatically make you God's great. He only has children, sons and daughters. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, become his disciple, and you can walk this life with us. It's, it is the best life available, possible. In a couple minutes, we're gonna watch a video in which each person being baptized shares a bit of their story how they became a disciple, what they're experiencing as a disciple, and uh, then we'll have the actual baptisms. So in this service, four are gonna be uh, baptized, and each person has the option of, of uh, choosing who will baptize them, typically someone who has influenced them spiritually. So Marlon Watson is gonna be baptized by Logan Lindahl. Uh, Lucia Cochran will be baptized by Doug Gurgle, who is our elementary director in our Next Gen Ministry, and Sarah Vogt, who is Lucia's life group leader, and then I will be baptizing Zach Cruz and Ben White. And so after, uh, before each person is baptized, they will make a series of affirmations, and then after they're baptized, we as the body of Christ will be able to make an affirmation expressing our, our acceptance and our desire for them. And so uh, I want us to practice this. You will be asked, people of God, what is your response? And then you will say this out loud in unison. If you're a follower of Christ, you're welcome to do this. I want us to practice so we can say it like we mean it after each baptism. So people of God, what is your response? We receive you into the family of God. Live and proclaim the gospel of Christ and share with us in life everlasting. Thanks. So those who are going to be baptized, join me in the back. The rest of you, if you would give your attention to the screen.
So growing up, my family always went to church, um, and sometimes I went to youth group and Bible studies, but um, that was kind of it for me. Um, I think in high school, I started to realize that having faith was pretty important, but um, I didn't really do anything about it. Um, and then last year, my freshman year here at K-State, um, I was surrounded by a lot of other believers, um, and I got involved here at Faith um, in Christian Challenge. And so I think just being around um, so many other believers and seeing how they love Christ and live for Christ um, helped me grow in my faith and the desire to live for God. The biggest difference for me um, after deciding to follow Christ is definitely just the peace and purpose. Um, I found since then um, just peace knowing that we serve like such a loving and just and gracious God um, and just having that purpose um, knowing what my mission is, um, the mission of Christ. One of my favorite Bible verses is Proverbs 69. Um, and it says, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. I made a decision over a, a period of time. It was around, actually coming up on two years now. Um, basically grew up um, going to church, but never really like had like an in-depth relationship. I just continued to find like uh, unfulfillment in the things that just like the world like has to offer. Um, and basically got to a point where I was just sort of like trying to find uh, fulfillment, like trying to fill this void that was, I guess, like in my heart or soul and um, eventually reach out to my sister who was following Christ um, and is following Christ. And um, she was kind enough to share the gospel with me and um, yeah, sort of haven't looked back since. <laughs> uh, a lot more joy uh, and love, I would definitely say. Um, I, I feel like I've experienced a lot of just um, love from just being, knowing more about who Jesus is, learning more about um, who He is and why He like, why we need Him in a sense. It gave me a purpose to where I, I was really didn't feel like I had a purpose in life before following Christ, but then like learning and coming into relationship with Christ, um, learning more about Jesus, it, it gave me a, a, an everlasting purpose um, and the love and joy that we can experience from Him and just understanding that like now I went from not having really much purpose to now having all the purpose. I have been a Christian for like as long as I can remember and I've always been a part of the church and doing stuff like that. but. Uh, I really came to faith when I was uh, in middle school and uh, going into high school because I was paying attention a lot more and I was uh, finding out more stuff about the Bible. It's made a big difference because it's it changes everything, the way I look at everything. Uh, following Jesus uh, means a lot to me and I feel like I see people in my school or in other places who uh, are in need or need other things and I can help them and I feel like if I didn't know Jesus and I didn't know all the things that he can do and that he's done then I wouldn't be as good of a person. Some of the things that have helped me grow in faith have been uh, definitely my parents who are always supporting me and uh, being able to like get my first Bible and start reading that and uh, also going to church every Sunday. Um, just it helps me become more involved in faith. My favorite verse is Micah 7 7 but as for me I watch and hope for the Lord I wait for God my Savior my God will hear me. Through their little camp council thing they had a uh, something called college night for college students and during uh, the worship time we uh, everyone was singing it was really good and uh, I mean, I kind of just felt the presence of Christ kind of like right behind me on my right side. And uh, so I was sitting in my chair for 15 minutes and my friend saw me, came over, I told her what happened and uh, we got uh, Pastor Bob Leilightner over here and I told him what happened and he mentioned uh, allowing Christ into my life and so I, uh, I did that and uh, my life has been uh, my life has been improving ever since. So.
My favorite Bible verse is uh, Psalm chapter 18, verses 16 through 19. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me on the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. The part where it talks about the strong enemy, I just, I just think about Satan and like the grip that he had on me and and then Christ coming down and uh, taking me away from Satan, so. My name is Lucia, I am 10 years old and I go to Mala Elementary. I love Jesus because he died on the cross for us and he created us with outstanding love. My favorite thing about um, church is the Bible verses and the stories we read. My favorite Bible story is Adam and Eve because it tells um, how God, like, that God had a plan for us and what happened that day. My favorite Bible verse is God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. Whoever believes in Him shall not die but have eternal life. I would like to thank my mom, dad, friends, cousins, aunts, and uncles, and my grandparents and uh, Sunday school teachers. I am Hudson Bell. I am eight years old and I go to school at Theodore Roosevelt. When I first believed in Jesus, I don't remember my age, but I remember I was pretty young. Um, every few days I would go up to my room and I would commit my life to Jesus, And but I was very young and so I understand it very little. And so I redid it when I was eight. I want to be baptized because I know that um, the Lord is our Savior. He is amazing. He is the light. If I didn't have Him, I would be lost. It, everything would be dark. My dad always says nobody can always understand God perfectly. And so I, I can agree with that because I just know that He has more wisdom than me. and. My parents have, I think they've really learned a lot since they're little, and I think that can really help me. My favorite verse is from Psalm 103, uh, verse one. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all in my inmost beings, praise His holy name. Um, I would like to thank my parents, my brothers, they have been a pretty good help. Um, I would also like to thank my grandparents, they also really do encourage me to follow the Lord. What led me to following Christ was I got married to somebody who followed Christ. Uh, my wife's family uh, were all believers, uh, attended church regularly. My wife, Sharice, said, hey, we need to attend church. Uh, she came down here from Washington to go to K-State and uh, she needed to find a church. So we found uh, Faith E-Free, and we've been coming here for the last two years. Going through the Rooted experience and having a group of believers um, and surrounding myself with that uh, really put me in a position to immerse myself and, and think about um, God and Jesus and the Bible and what it all means. Having uh, that mindset that, you know, you if, give it to Jesus, Jesus will take care of you. Um, and if you, and, and that just helps me feel comfortable knowing that whatever I'm stressing about or whatever is going on, it's all in God's hands at the end of the day and He's going to take me and put me where He wants me to be. I think I was five and we were just kind of having a hard night and I wasn't being like that obedient. So dad comes in and he talks to me about it and I, I say, well, I want to be obedient, but I can't do it on my own. And then he talks to me about it a little bit more. And then I'm like, by golly, what are we waiting for? There's these things called Jesus moments and you feel God talking to you and 
it's so awesome and I'm and I got one of those during the service and then God was telling me uh, to to get baptized and so and I try to listen to God when he's trying to tell me something why I love Jesus is it's kind of simple because he saved my life and the whole lives of the world it was so awesome so um, I have to thank uh, my mom, my dad, Carrie, and Lucia Cochran t for helping me learn and know more about God. Marlon, this is awesome. This is so cool. Um, man, I remember meeting you uh, a little over two years ago when you joined our Rooted group. And uh, I remember the first thing I noticed about you was just a teachable heart, a humble spirit about you. And uh, you confessed to us, I don't know anything, but you learned and God was faithful to you. And so my prayer for you, Marlon, is that you would remain humble and that you would keep that teachable spirit that God's given you. And uh, if you do that, God will not fail you. He will be faithful to you, and you will grow in your love for Jesus. That's my prayer for you, brother. And so this is an exciting day. I want to lead you in a confession of your faith. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of evil in the world? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? I will with God's help. All right, my brother, it is my privilege to, because of your confession of, confession of faith in Jesus Christ to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> People of God, what is your response? We receive you into the family of God. Live and proclaim the gospel of Christ and share with us in life everlasting. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> Lucia, it is so great uh, to be able to get to know you over the last few years and to watch you grow and to, in your love for Jesus and the, your love for people around you. Um, one of the things that really sticks out to me is your <coughs> determined and joyful trust in our Heavenly Father in everything, whether it's being patient for a move or whether it's preparing for surgery, you just know your Father's got this and got you and you share that with everybody. Last week, I was really reminded of uh, Paul and Timothy in our story, and it, it made me think of you. As Paul encouraged a young Timothy to uh, make sh be an example to the believers in what he said and what he did, and in his love and in his faith, so I encourage you, and my prayer for you is to continue to grow in Jesus and continue to be that awesome, refreshing blessing to others, um, just as you have been to this point. 
Lucia, I've been your teacher for several years now, and it's a wonderful thing getting to see you and your love for people around you and the, and for God and how you want everybody to come to know God. And um, I think it's wonderful that God is already using you because um, you're the one that Lucy mentioned in her video. <laughs> and um, just I ask that you would remember to follow God and that he loves you and he has a plan for you and he has works that he prepared in advance for you to do. Now, Lucia... Do we do this first? Sorry. Yep. All right. All right. <laughs> Lucia, I want to lead you in a confession of your faith. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of evil in the world? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? I do. Will you be a faithful disciple obeying his word and showing his love. I will, with God's help. All right. And Lucia, our, our sister, sister in Christ, we baptize, baptize you in, in the name, name of the Father, Son, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. God, what is, what is, what is our, our response? response? The family of God, live and proclaim the gospel of Christ and share with us in life everlasting. I'm so glad that you have chosen to take this step of baptism and publicly declare your faith before family and friends and before the whole church. And I'm encouraged by what God's been doing in your life the couple, last couple of years. He's given you a hunger for the word. I understand you actually pay attention to the sermons and grow from them, which is amazing. You're light years ahead of where I was when I was your age. And you have a heart for prayer and you have compassion for your friends. You want them to experience what you have. And so I look forward to how God is going to work in your life in the future. Trust in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of evil in the world? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? I will, with God's help. Great. Ben, because of your faith in Jesus, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And people of God, what is our response? We receive you into the family of God. Live and proclaim the gospel of Christ and share with us in life everlasting. Awesome. Very good. Zach, I love your story. Uh, Jesus is a good shepherd, right? And you were the lost sheep that he came. He sought you out. He called you by name. And you said yes. And you're following him. And I just love that about you. And uh, you have a, a simple 
boldness in the way you talk about your relationship with God. And I want to assure you that your past is not a liability. Actually, it's an asset. God will flip it for his glory. And I'm excited to see how God works in your life in days and years to come and how he uses you in the life of many, many people. I, I absolutely believe that will happen. And so, trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of evil in the world? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? I will, with God's help. Awesome. Because of your faith in Jesus, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. God, what is our response? You have God. Live and proclaim the gospel of Jesus and share with us in the life everlasting. Heavenly Father, we pray for Zach and for all those baptized today. We pray that you give them everything they need to thrive in their relationship with you. And we pray that we as the church, as the body of Christ, would be there for them, that we would be good brothers and sisters and we would show them everything that we know and uh, help them walk with us as we follow you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.